Hello. It's time today for another rune video. I know it's been quite a while since the last one. This series is uh, taking its time. <coughs> today, we're looking at the final rune of the second eight. If you look back, if you haven't watched the rest of this playlist, you might want to start from the beginning because there it's explained the 24 runes are divided into three sets of eight, the three eights. And these have different thematics and different connections to each other. So that um, they, mean, they mean different things and they connect to, to different concepts. And the first eight is kind of the, the realm of, of human life and the human development. And then the second eight corresponds in you know, a in a way to um, the forces of nature and the um, the relation of course that the, that the individual has with that and the rune that we're looking at today the final rune of the second eight is called solo or soul or sigil and uh, that's it there. And this rune is the S rune in uh, in in the uh, in the runic alphabet in the Elder Futhark. It's it's their equivalent of the letter S, and it's representative of the sun ray, so a ray of sunlight uh, extending outward. And you can see it. It's drawn with a a line. Uh, that's going upwards, then this kind of interruption, and then it continues on its path, right? So like a kind of refraction, you could say. And uh, I'll be talking a little bit more about that in a moment. So the basic meaning that's attributed to to Solo is uh, the, sub, the, the, the idea of the sun ray, the sunlight, the triumph of the sun, um, invincibility, victory, it's, uh, it's a symbol of very good fortune generally when you get it in a kind of a runic casting, especially in terms of like achieving what you want to achieve. And it represents um, this notion of the will having reached its, its strength and its potence, the, the, the individual will to achieve um, now becoming manifest in an outward direction. So the, the sun extending its rays out. And it has within it this kind of um, imagery that, you see, the, the will strengthens itself. How? By uh, challenge. If you don't have crisis, you don't have growth. So uh, this is, in a way, a message of all of the second ayat. Uh, it's very interesting that the, the First rune of the second day is Hagal, which is the hailstorm. Uh, so it starts with storm and ice, and it ends with the sunlight, right? With the with the ray of the sun coming through at the end of the storm. Um, and this is symbolized in the actual design of the rune itself, which is that it begins with an outward flow, hits an interruption, something that that an obstacle to that flow but manages to adjust itself, to move through it, to adapt, and then uh, proceeds forward, continuing in, that direct, in the direction it was intending. So what this suggests is, is a number of things. First, that the will is strengthened through challenge, if you meet that challenge, and that to meet that challenge, you have to be willing to adjust your direction, to adjust your flow, while retaining your original vision, your original intention. So there, there's some pretty important lessons hidden within that in terms of just what exactly is the path to victory. Sometimes um, when people get this this rune, th there's kind of this interpretation of just mean, well, everything just turns out right. Well, that's not right. It, this, this depends on the manifestation of your will. It's not just, oh, great good luck will fall upon you for no good reason, right? It's saying, that uh, you have to know the way to make fortune happen, and this is the way. It's by, by having a focused will, but also 
by not trying to stubbornly direct that will without being able to adjust yourself and retain that vision, retain that direction of where you're going. So we see this in terms of the ayats. Um, the first ayat spoke about these, uh, the nature of life, you could say. The second ayat, to kind of sum it all up, uh, you begin with Hagal, the hailstorm, which is, in a way, the, the uh, kind of primordial state of things. And then Ni'ed, which is um, the, uh, the first spark, the first fire, the light that, that um, shines in that darkness. And uh, then you have Isa, which is the, the primal ice. Um, these were two forces, ice and fire, that were essential to kind of the cosmology of the, the Germanic and Viking people that, that used the runes. Um, then you have, once those, those basic forces are sort of laid down, um, you have Yera, which is the cycle of the year, right? It's, it's um, the, the cycles of nature. Um, then there's, the, there's Ahaz, which is initiation to nature. Um, it's the, and, and partly it's also about death, which is um, fundamentally not the end of nature, but a part of nature. Then there's Perthro, which is the mystery that underlines that force, the well of weird. And Algiz, which is... Um, the reaching up to heaven, you could say it's, it's like the Bifrost, the, the bridge that, that goes upwards. Um, so you have Yggdrasil, which leads downwards. Then there's the Well of Weird, which is the source of all space and time, the source of the mysteries. And then Algiz, which is the Bifrost that leads you up to the heavens, where you find the Sun Wheel, which is Sowilo, right? The sun in its, and its rays. Uh, this ties very closely to, to sort of the, the formula of ancient shamanism which uh, a, a, an ancient shaman would have to, and, and shamanism in this case, is, I'm not using it in a specific cultural context, but shamanism as the primitive um, or religion of all human beings, you, you see the same basic formula in all of the earliest kind of tribal and primitive practices throughout the world, whether you're talking about Siberian shamans or whether you're talking about the ancient European shamans, or whether you're talking about shamans in the Americas or um, shamans in Asia or Africa, it's always this formula that first the shaman must learn what are the basic tools with which to change himself. Then he must understand enough about nature to know how to apply those tools. And then he goes through an initiation, and this initiation is like a death. And in that death, he descends down into the underworld, where there he is broken down in the primordial force and then is able to ascend up along the world tree. It's not always a tree, but in this case, it's a world tree, and it's a world tree in a lot of cultures. He ascends up the, the, the world tree or up whatever force it is that leads up to heaven. And there in heaven, he is filled with this power of the, the heavenly force. And this is um, the force that is embodied in the, the soul rune, but it's also, the soul rune describes the process of getting there. That's it for today. Uh, I don't know when the next rune video will happen, but it will happen. We'll get there, and now we, we've only got one more aid to go through. Um, if you like this video, well, if, if you didn't check out the other videos in the playlist, you'll want to look at them to understand more about all the other runes as they've been detailed so far. And be sure to check out the other playlists on this channel, um, including the playlist of the Yi Fa Society, which details a system of spiritual cultivation, which um, if you're interested in practicing, you may wish to contact me about it. And please feel free to share this video anywhere that you think people will be interested in it. Thank you very much.